Albert Einstein didn't live long enough to see the dimension of reality we so regularly call cyberspace, but now he'll occupy a prominent place in that alternate universe. From this session on, it's your mission and our mission to bring the best of Einstein archives to the world. Israel's Hebrew University has launched a plan to digitize Einstein's entire archive and put it on the web. The German Jewish physicist bequeathed everything he wrote, over 80,000 documents, to the university he helped establish in 1925. With just a few computer clicks, people all over the world, not just academics, will be able to look into the life of arguably the most important scientist of the 20th century, the intellectual powerhouse who overturned Isaac Newton's theory of gravity with his own general theory of relativity. Hanach Gutfreund, the director of the Einstein Archive, spearheaded the online project. If you have a personality like that, who is politically active, committed, and very opinionated, who thinks about, about society, about the fate of human being, who at the same time is the most imaginative, innovative scientist, who has a very complex, not simple personal life. You are interested in producing a coherent, integral picture of such a personality. That is what the archives allow us to do, and that is what the Einstein on the web will show to everybody, to everybody. Hebrew University has begun by posting 2,000 German documents online, covering up to the year 1921. Most have duplicates in English. The hope is that every few months more records will be added. Visitors can look at Einstein's original 46-page manuscript of the general theory of relativity from 1915. It's the most valuable Einstein document in existence. The Nobel Prize he won in 1921 is also online, and with advanced high-resolution software, the texture comes through. Einstein's complicated love life is also on display. His pension for affairs began early. With no one left alive to be offended, the university decided it was legally kosher to post correspondence with more than a half dozen lovers. Passionate letters from Einstein to his mistress, Elsa Lowenthal, are posted in the first batch, letters he wrote while he was still married to his first wife. He ended up marrying Elsa. His years with Mileva, his first wife, after a passionate love affair, it became a time of estrangement where he was quite cruel to her. And the divorce was very bitter, but the new correspondence which I mentioned, the correspondence which we could reveal only 20 years after the death of his stepdaughter, there are about 1,400 uh, letters. Uh, they shed a much more favorable light on him as a family man as well, much warmer than the impression that was given us before. Leonard Polonsky made the Einstein online archive possible with a generous donation to Hebrew University. He did the same at Cambridge to digitize Isaac Newton's writings. Polonsky says he wants to use modern technology to safeguard important libraries, which in the past have been destroyed in both ancient and modern wars. The capacity of the human creature to create is matched, unfortunately, by the capacity to destroy. And so <laughs> we have two functions here, at least. One is to protect by, through digitization. The other is a kind of democratic idea, to make it aware for a vast audience who will use it or not use it, but at least it's out there. Copies of some of the 80,000 documents that will go online are kept in these boxes in the Einstein archive. They provide a window into one of the greatest scientific minds, but they also show a man who is deeply engaged with the world outside of science. Einstein corresponded with some of the most important thinkers of his time. Here we see letters to Mahatma Gandhi, to Sigmund Freud, to the American president Franklin Roosevelt, and the Israeli leader Chaim Weizmann. As more of the archive goes online, Einstein's letters like these with other intellectuals of his day will be available for all to read. Letters that show Einstein's fears about nuclear weapons, 
his hopes for greater equality in pre-civil rights America and for greater democracy in India. What else is coming up? Goodfreund says we'll discover Einstein identified even more strongly as a Jew than many people realize. And Einstein himself wrote about it. In his letter to David Ben-Gurion, in which he regretfully rejected the offer to become the second president of the state of Israel, he says that he is very sorry, very embarrassed that he has to turn this offer down and he's particularly sorry because his Jewish bond has become his strongest human bond ever since he became aware of our precarious situation among the nations. So according his own testimony and through this archive, through these documents, we can learn how that bond, how that human bond developed, evolved, and how it was demonstrated throughout his life. One important way that bond evolved was in his relationship to the state of Israel. Einstein began as a cultural Zionist, advocating for a spiritual center for the Jewish people, but not a political state. But that changed in the 1940s, when even on the ashes of the Holocaust, the Jews were not left alone. He was very disappointed with the attitudes of the mandatory authorities, the British mandatory authorities. He was very disappointed with the attitudes of the, uh, of the Arab League. And therefore, when the community, the Jewish community here was already struggling, fighting for independence, he came out with support. Einstein always advocated for sharing political power with the Arab minority in Israel. In a future letter to be posted online, he describes what some call his naive formula for peacemaking. He writes to an Arab newspaper that a committee of four Arabs and four Jews should secretly meet to resolve the issues that divide them. One nugget those fascinated with Einstein can look forward to seeing are his grades from grammar and high school. There have been rumors that the century's most famous scientist was a lousy student. But Gutfreund says that isn't so. We'll have to wait till we get the report cards. Jordana Miller, JN1, Jerusalem.